Good day to all of you. Last video, we discuss about the importance of planting and propagating trees and fruit-bearing trees. In this episode, our topics are full of excitement because you will learn something that you might enjoy doing. If you love trees and the delicious fruits that we get from them, you will never ask yourself why we should plant and nurture orchard. We all know that trees have a vital role in the world ecosystem. It produces oxygen for animals and humans to breathe. It plays an important role in the communities. It provides a place for people and the rest of the nature can successfully work together to create abundance harvest. We are now in quarter two, week three, and I am your teacher, Sir Jojo. Are you excited for a fun learning session? Our lesson is all about types of orchard farms. In this lesson, you will identify the types of orchard farms. You will give example of trees planted in each type of orchard. And you will identify trees for orchard gardening based on location, climate, and market's demand. And to start today's lesson, let me ask you this. What is an orchard? Orchard is an intentional plantation of fruit trees or nut trees that is maintained for food production. It is also known as fruit farm. Therefore, an orchard can have any kind of growing trees and fruit-bearing trees for profitable production. Here are the types of orchard farms. First, we have fruit orchards. It includes any facilities that focuses on fruit-bearing trees and it is the common type of orchard. Some of the popular fruit trees in our country is mango, avocado, durian, mangosteen, jackfruit, lanzones, rambutan, and many more. Citrus trees such as pomelo, lemon, lime, or orange may be grown in large citrus orchards or individually in smaller area. Class here are some photos and images of a fruit orchards. Next is nut orchards. It includes all facilities that focuses on nut bearing trees. The three nuts that are popular in our country are cashew nuts and pili nuts. This category also includes coconuts and cacaos. And here are the example of nuts coming from nut-bearing trees. And last is the seed orchards. It is an area where superior quality of plants or trees are established and managed intensively and entirely to produce large quantity of improved seeds. The seeds in the orchard are sold to large agricultural facilities and commercial distributors for resale to the public in small seed packets. The size of the seed orchard is determined by the seed demand and the expected seed production from the orchard. Here are some photos of seed orchard. Class, it is important to us to know the trees appropriate for orchard gardening based on location, climate, and market demands. In having an orchard, we should consider our location. Picking the right tree for the right place is very important. Trees will be more productive when they are planted in place suitable for them. Topography affects plant growth through differential incidence of solar radiation, wind velocity, soil type, temperature effect, and even the level of the sea. Climate, the right time, season, or condition of the place is equally important as choosing the landscape where trees should be planted. Adaptability of plants, trees to grow depend much on the temperature of the place, whether it is humid, wet, cold, 
windy and the like. Here are the trees appropriate for the orchard gardening based on climate condition. Market demand. This is something to consider especially when an orchardist is inclined to a business. He must have an idea of the fruit desired by many people in all locations, availability of fruits in different locality, fruits in season, and even pricing for him to have a better profit. Here are the trees appropriate for the orchard gardening based on market demand. Now, we all know trees appropriate for orchard gardening based on location, climate, and market demands. We will proceed to proper way of planting, propagating trees, and fruit-bearing trees. First is budding. It is the process of transferring the lateral bud from the scion, a mature branch, to the stock, a seedling plant, of the same family. The two types of budding are pots budding and tea budding. Pots budding is widely used on fruit trees and thick bark. I have here a photo of top budding. Next is grafting. It is the art of joining two pieces of living plant tissue together a root system, the root stock, with a shoot system, the scion, in such a manner that they will unite and subsequently grow and develop as one composite plant. There are several types of grafting such as cleft, saddle, splice and whip, and tongue. I have here an image of the procedure of grafting. And last is marketing. It is also called air layering in which the stems are included to root while they are still growing on the mother plant. This method is considered the oldest in propagating fruit trees. And here are the images of a marketed plants. What are the sources of fruit-bearing trees? The number one source of fruit-bearing trees is commercial nursery. This is managed by private individuals usually selling trees and fruit-bearing tree seedlings. It is followed by agricultural training institute. These schools offer courses related to agriculture like production and distribution of seedlings. Next is the Department of Agriculture. This is a government agency responsible for all agricultural activities and research in terms of vegetable and fruits production. Fourth is the Bureau of Plant Industry. This develops scientific improvement for each plant species in a locality and adjacent places. It also ensures availability of quality seeds, safety of plant food and development of crop farming technologies and safeguard of the plant industry. And last is the Department of Environment and Natural Resources. This ensures the continuous production of adequate supply of planting materials to meet the requirements for high quality seeds and seedlings by the government and private sectors in the establishment and development of trees plantation, tree farms, forest gardens, forestation, agroforestation projects, and rehabilitation of watersheds and coastal areas. After knowing the sources of fruit-bearing trees, we also need to know the proper way of caring seedlings. Number one is watering. Water the tree seedlings twice a day, preferably early in the morning and late in the afternoon. Small seedlings need little quantity of water at frequent intervals unlike bigger seedlings. Overwatering lessens the essential nutrients and increases fungal, bacterial, and dumping of disease which can cause the root and stem to rot. Insufficient watering causes wilting and stunted plant growth. Number two is weeding. This is a process of removing unwanted plants called weeds that tend to overgrow the tree seedlings. Weeding should be done carefully so that the tree seedling will not be damaged. It will cause the tree seedling to fully absorb more moisture and nutrient from the soil. This also provides enough space for the roots and plants to grow and exposure to sunlight. Number three is fertilizing. 
This is a process of applying fertilizers to supply the essential nutrients that the growing tree seedlings need. You can apply a complete soluble fertilizer with the following components Nitrogen, Phosphorus, Potassium This done every 15 days For small tree seedlings, use lower concentration of fertilizer by dissolving 10 kg of fertilizers in 200 liters of water This will avoid nutrient loss and possible fertilizer burn on the plants The fourth and last is shading this is a process of providing shade to protect the tree seedlings from damages caused by direct sunlight. You can use coconut or banana sheets, kugon or other locally available materials such as net, mipa, etc. as temporary shades during and shortly after seed germination and after transplanting. And that's end our lesson for today! And I hope you learned something from your teacher. Teacher Jojo, see you on my next video lesson. But before you leave, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Goodbye.